So let's see here, let's get caught up. What are we doing? Well, I already have the top cab assembled for the Lesu forklift. This is a hydraulic forklift in case you're just joining me. Uh, I've done a few videos about this assembly and build already. In the last one we did the front drive motor and transmission right here. I haven't mounted those up yet. The mast, the boom is all assembled already. And of course, today we're going to move on to the lower half of the forklift. You'll see I've already put two tabs under there, which were just put in with two small 6 mil screws that are M2s. Uh, and you can hear, <laughs> all metal. So the first thing we're going to be doing is putting in the steering assembly, right? Because a forklift turns in the rear. And you'll see that there's two mounting holes on either side, which is going to coincide with two pins, four flanged bearings, where you can see that they have a bit of a lip on the side. There it is. And the two uh, steering pivot points. So I'll just cut into this bag here, get both of these out. Everything is basically made of metal, almost everything, except for the interior and the seat. Everything I've seen, uh, other than, you know, obviously like the covers for the signal lights, is metal. And I'm going to need two E-clips. You can see them here. Silver and the bearings. You'll note that each spindle is slightly different. This one only has a half arm on it. Here you can see I've already put in the uh, bearings on either side and I'll do the same on this one. Okay, now looking at the front, or the rear I should say, but the front of the model right now that I'm looking at, this one that only has the half arm is gonna go on to the right hand side and it's gonna go like this. So arm backwards, and if I can try to get that fit in there, I'm gonna have to shave some of the paint off of there, but it looks like it's gonna go like that. Same on the other side. Yeah, see I have it on here, but I don't like the way it's binding from the paint. So what I'm gonna do is take a small hobby file, and just get rid of some of that paint here, making sure that I've got, you know, um, easy to move steering. Want to make sure it's, you know, somewhat fair for the guys on loading wars. <laughs> of course, fair is pretty down low on the list of uh, priorities, much like safety. Now that is much better. There's no resistance there at all. So when it's on the pin, it should be able to move easy. Now I'll take those two pins, slide them in on either side, and put the E-clip right on the opposite once everything is lined up. Perfect. And then when you're done cursing and screaming at the Jesus clips, <laughs> because people scream out oh, Jesus when they start flying around the room, you test them out and make sure that you can move them. And you can see here, no problem. So moving on to the next step. Okay, in this kit, they give you quite a few servos. Normally a kit means it doesn't include electronics, but this one does, all of them in fact except for your radio. Now, here is the high tech This is a Metal Gear HS82 servo, so this is gonna be handling the steering. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be cutting three of these tabs off, only leaving one remaining. Uh, I noticed this steering horn is actually very, very small. There's only two holes on it, and the one in the instruction book shows that there's three. And the shorter the steering horn, the th the uh, not as the shorter the throw of the steering, basically. So even though this might bite me a little bit later in the build, I'm going to actually use this longer horn and trim the three off of these instead, which looks a lot like this. I can trim down the sides a little more, but you get the idea. I know, you should only be filing one way, but it doesn't matter. Not today. Now, if I was going according to the book, this would confuse me a little bit because it's showing me making a steering rod. Now, it tells me that it's going to be 56.5 uh, uh, in length, but then when you look in here, it, there's one that's already pre-made. And it is exactly the same size that I needed. So this is actually the steering linkage in between these two horns. Then they asked me to make another one out of these. So here's one of the middle pieces and then two of the rod ends. 
This shorter one is actually going to be behind the servo horn like that. So screwed in. And then just like a normal crawler servo steering setup, it'll be installed like that. Okay, now it looks like I'm making some sort of small latch, right? This is how I'm doing it here. This is going to be very small and intricate, so I'm just going to build this off camera and show you how it works. This is the spring I'm going to need for the latch. Or maybe it's more helpful if I just show you the steps. Sometimes I wonder to myself, and I want you guys to let me know right now in the comment section, A, if you're even watching at this point in time, and B, sometimes I do the magic of TV and I just show the pieces being done, and sometimes I go into the little tiny details like this, but you can understand doing the show for so many years here that, you know, you don't want to have your hand in the shot all the time. It's sometimes easier just to show how it's done, but I want to know from you guys. Let me know in the comment section. And there it is. The irony being, of course, I had to take this bottom plate off so I could put this latch uh, on with this, the bolt that goes right through and that nut. Uh, but there it is. The magic of TV. Done. Okay, once you get that tightened up, make sure you have a look at your steering. Get it straightened out to make sure that the uh, length of this rod is correct. And to me, even though the camera may warp it with you guys, it looks pretty straight. And I'll grab this funky looking metal piece right here. Everything is bagged, so I'm going to have a ton of recycling. Two holes on the bottom, and that's going to get mounted up like that. This is going to be the servo holder, or the servo brace, servo mount, servo, whatever you want to call it. And there we go. Then I take my servo that's already been centered and I drop it right in. So it's out of the way of the front latch, which still can move and maneuver, right, like that. And then this is gonna go over to that steering knuckle right there. So it's gonna help move that whole steering assembly in behind the servo. And then before more time goes by than I'd like to admit, <laughs> The whole steering assembly and latch system is complete. So here you can have a look. That's quite the angle. I'm glad I left the extra, um, the extra length on that servo horn as well as I was checking it out. Now, am I going to get punished when, it's, when the tires are actually on? I don't know, but we're going to be able to find out right away. So a few minutes for you guys on video, but definitely about an hour while I've been filming just to, you know, get through the instructions and put this whole front end together. Or back end, I should say. So deep groove ball bearings. That's what I'm going to use right now. I'm going to take these unpainted brass pieces. I'm going to take the painted end caps for the wheels. That one will have a chip in it. <laughs> and I'll take these two pre-assembled tires and rims. So if I can get this to focus, you can see that there is a nice deep channel on the inside. Flip it over and there's a little bit of a lip. So what we want to do is take this bearing, stick it out so it's protruding like that. Then this one, slide it in deep. <laughs> so many innuendo opportunities here, my friends. Then I slide it right through the coupling, right there, and you can see that extra end of the shaft there sticks perfectly straight through the end of that bearing like that. So I've got just the axle stub sticking out. I'm gonna to want to get a little washer as well as a little nut right there to end that off, and I'm gonna do it on both sides. These are some of the smallest nuts I've ever seen. Zine, zine. <laughs> so they're on both sides. Ah, no. Is that supposed to keep it on? I don't think so. That's so silly. <laughs> what a blooper right there. Aha, it's these washers I was looking for, not the black ones I was using. So this will help keep the bearing on, keep that whole wheel weight in place because that wasn't going to be helpful at all. There we go. And then now that is good. But if I did it too tight, it feels a little bit. Let me back it off a little bit there. Yeah, that's better. Woohoo! Okay, there's no spacer behind here, but if I find if I do it up too tight, it just kind of wants to stick a little bit. So I'm not going to do that. I'm going to take one of these end caps, I'm going to stick it over. Does it fit? It does. 
And then I'm gonna line up the holes just like that. So this cap fits right over the end. Let me do it again on this side so you can see. Doot doot, just like that. And then I take the wheel. Once all the holes are lined up, I can see that they're slightly different like that. And then I bolt on the rear wheels once I get all the holes like that. And then I do all the bolts da -da 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 -da, in a star pattern, remember. I always try to do what I do in full size into smaller scale. I don't know why, but it's just something I've always done. I bet you guys do the same thing. These are actual bolts, they're not screws. You could ask me, why aren't you using like a, um, a power tool of some sort? But I have to tell you, when I'm using very small bolts like these, I like to be able to feel the amount of torque that I'm applying to those, yeah? And then that way you can see exactly what a star pattern is in case you're unfamiliar with what I was speaking about earlier. And then before you know it, you've got 20 bolts all done up and ready to rock and roll. Look at this. Beautiful, both of them on bearings. And look at this, my friends. Look at the steering throw on that. That is amazing. This is what we were hoping for, right? You want to have some mega throw on your forklift so you can turn, as well as have enough weight on the forklift that when you are turning, that the heavy load up front isn't lifting your steering wheels off the back. Uh, so that's something, you know, we saw in Loading Wars quite a bit last year with the Carson, Lin uh, Carson Lind forklifts, uh, is that once you have a straight axle in the front that's just powering locked, uh, like a lock differential all the time, you get that weight and it lifts up on your back and you can't turn effectively. I think that's definitely been addressed addressed in this build so far. I'm hoping for good things. Now I reach way up here and get this painted platform. This platform is actually going to get attached right over the servo here. So it's got two bolts on the bottom. I'm going to quickly zip those into place. Okay, I'm going out on a limb here and saying this is one of the coolest builds I've done on the channel in the last 11 years. Like, we have done some really cool stuff, but I have to say, building a small hydraulic forklift kit, look at this. Yeah, I love the blue and yellow. What are you guys thinking of the colors so far? I know it's a little bit... Uh, not what you're used to for this brand, but I think the owner of any RC should paint it any color they want. And you know Loading Wars, I love it baby. Blue is a mega color in that game. Okay, so now what? Because this is like a pretty big point where it's like either I keep on going or I stop the video here and I, I figure we all wanna see what's going on with this hydraulic block, right? This is where all the fluid passes through. This has been pre-tested. This is the valve block. You'll see this is where the servos actually open and close the valves that allow the fluid to move freely and return, which is allowing the boom to move up and down the mast as well as to boom forward and backward. So let's see how this sets up. I'm gonna need some servos. Okay, on a side note, I get a lot of people that say to me, you know, I'm interested in building a forklift like this. You say it's one of the coolest things you have ever built, but what's the difficulty rating out of 10? If 10 is the most difficult, and I'm gonna rate this at around a six and a half for, for me because, for example, things in the instruction book like this is it shows that there's a servo, shows the servo horn, and it shows the valve block. It shows that what you do is you clip the servo horn and then it goes into the valve block like that and it controls the valves. But if you look at the valve block, that's not the case. You'll actually see that these two posts in the middle have a flat side on one side. That means that we're not installing a servo horn there. In fact, there should be an additional part. So when I look around and I think, oh yeah, where did I see those parts? This here, you'll see, is a valve opener and closer. This is actually going to be seated right on to those servos, onto the servo outputs. There's the flat spot. Aha, now I'm getting it. So, I do have to do the horn. I clip the horn, but the horn goes in here. You see that? 
which in turn mounts on the flat side. So when I say it's very cool, it is, but when I say you've got to have a 6 out of 10 or 6.5 out of 10, you know, difficulty rating, you've got to be able to put two and two together and kind of do your own detective work. Yes, you'd think for a cost of a thousand dollars plus of a model like this, you'd have perfect instructions, but the reality of the situation is that that rarely happens. So anything in RC is going to take a higher skill level you know especially when you're when you're building models like this so have a good look at this okay well <laughs> you can't really do it when it's not focused but you're getting the general idea of how this would work this servo has already been centered and it's going to fit on like that so what I want to do is clip the tabs on either side so it's fairly flush and I'm going to do this with both servos Beautiful. Now that is going to fit and work. Kind of make it rounded so those square corners don't uh, cause issues within that valve block when you're trying to open and close the valve. Okay, let's look at the valve block and for a second you can see exactly what the heck's going on. Just in case there's any misunderstanding, this way you know the valve is in the closed or open position but in the factory position and then all I have to do is take that servo and mount it up in the hole right there. Then I've got a centered servo which will open and close that valve. And that is what it looks like as it's all mounted up. I've got 12% battery on my camera. <laughs> you guys, I better hurry. <laughs> Okay, step 42, I get to work with the funky brass. These are all the hydraulic hoses. You'll see down here a few other pieces as well. I'm gonna have to start putting some fittings in with some proper spacers onto the hydraulic block and fit all this together. Man, this is a massive build. Nice and careful. People will ask me maybe why I haven't painted the brass, but I, I truly do love the look of the brazing. It's like artwork, right? Plus if I paint and I get stuff in the holes, it's just gonna cause a problem. And for me, it's really not as important because it looks like more steampunk-esque and I like that stuff. And I'll grab the bag of banjo pins, take that banjo flow pin and push it through have the thread lock in the female coupler there. Take your washer, another one, stick that on the back side, then use some pliers because forcing it through these small washers, you have to take a moment. I actually threaded it right into the end of my finger. <laughs> I didn't feel it, thankfully. But you want to be careful when you're working with power tools and with analog tools. <laughs> yeah, I just said that. I know who the tool is. Damn it! See what I mean? Now the washers are in place. This should be a lot easier for me to put on now. That was a struggle. Like a glove. No problem at all. So it only makes sense to anticipate what's coming up and I added the next two as well with the two washers ready to go. Okay, then I take the second piece of hydraulic line and I lay it over the top like this. Does that make sense? Let me see that. Yep, that's how it goes. So we'll just be careful with the small tubing because it doesn't want to flex very much. So one side, I'm not going to tighten it up, get my hands in the way there. You guys, I know that a lot of you are like, oh my god, $1,000 for that. I have to tell you, I've been building for hours today. <laughs> there is a lot of tedious, if you're looking for a 3D puzzle, this may be what you're looking for. Okay, so those both have Loctite, thread lock, I should say, and it's in. So looking like this. Then we take the last piece right now on this side, the last piece for the right side. Come on now. Lots of small pieces for to, to get in front of the camera, but of course large hands which cover all of it up. 
7% left on the battery. Not good. Okay, so I got one more piece. It's this one over here. Is this the one? No, nope. this one. No, 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 no. Do, 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 do. What video game is that from? No, 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 no. Do, 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 do. Okay, that's got to be something similar like that. Guys, look at this. Look at that. Wow, that in itself was unique to build. So all the pressure lines are ready to go. This now gets set off to the side. And stretch over here, get the 930 kV brushless outrunner. This is the pump and motor. 15 turn. Wow, small. If I was a betting man, and I seldom am, I would say that this fits in on this bracket. Let's wait a second here. Yeah, no, that's right and then fits up on this bracket in the middle. I mounted it up with two screws and look at this. There's where the motor sits for the pump. So cool. Right here is the hydraulic tank. Look how tiny it is. This is the smallest hydraulic tank I've ever seen. Well, maybe the scissors are starting to get a little bit dull. I'll have to sharpen them up. Look at that. Now, I didn't paint it because it's going to have hydraulic oil on it anyway, so it's not a big deal. It's on the inside. But this comes with a couple of caps right here. One of the caps. I'm not sure if it's the brass one or the black one. It doesn't say in the instructions. Beautiful. This has two holes on the bottom and gets dropped in right there. What's the next step? 4% on the camera battery. Okay, now we have to connect. Uh, let's see, where's that extra hose? Right here. Look at this, here's the last little brass pipe. That's gonna go from the tank to the pump. Is that correct? It is, but why? What's going on here? What have I done wrong? Why, oh, it's upside down. This is upside down, dang it! Okay, now that makes way more sense. Right here. This is how I'm gonna connect the tank to the pump. Okay, now for my last awesome move of the day. Check this out. If I can even get this block in here properly, I can. So here's the giant servo block with all the hoses. Get this brushless wire out of the, or the brushed wire out of the way for the transmission and motor. And then see if I can get that in there and screw down somehow. Holy cow, look at this. What the frig is that? That is insane, guys. All that, no wonder, like the whole motor and transmission and drive you know, the limited slip differential, everything in this weighted front box, and then the whole hydraulic system on the inside. Are you kidding? I still have to fit a receiver in here. I bet you it's gonna fit right in here. And a sound system? Holy cow. <laughs> I'm gonna get this cinched down. This thing is just insane. There we go. I don't want to over tighten everything, but that is a thing of beauty, guys. Holy cow. Okay, so for my last amazing feat, I thought it was going to be just to get this done, but no, I'm going to be able to get this. Look at this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight for the mast. I've got tons of elect uh, like hosing to do still. <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> let me see. Let me get these in before the batteries die. Let me see if I can get it. Yeah, all done. There it is. The battery's giving me the signal right now. You are past your time of expiration. There it is, guys. 
Okay, so you got to see all of the hydraulics go together. Well, generally speaking, I got a lot of tubing to do in the next episode. Same with the electronics. The top electronics plate is going to be added. Hopefully, we're going to be able to see it run in the next episode. Guys, thanks for hanging out. Make some love for me down with the like button right now. I want you to rub up against it. Click that like button right now and show me that you love RC Adventures. And until next time, guys, go outside and have fun with RC. Or like me, stay inside and build one. See you guys.